Hello, Moon Lane. My name's Emma Norrie. Um, sometimes I write as M Norrie, which is the name I'm using for my latest book, Amber Undercover. Amber Undercover comes out on April the 1st um, and is the book that I will be reading from today and talking all about my inspiration, how I came up with the idea. Um, but I also write as E.L. Norrie. Um, the E.L. stands for Emma Louise. And that was my first book, which was out September 2019. And it was a middle grade historical called Son of the Circus. There it is, the beautiful gold foil. And this was book number three in a series for Scholastic um, called the Voices series, which is all about the fact that black people have been in this country throughout history. And I chose the Victorian period to write about. So this book was my first book um, and that was fantastic. And I enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed writing historical middle grade, but Amber undercover is much different to that. It's very exciting. This book is all about Amber Roberts, who's a 14 year old teenage girl. Um, she's got a best friend, Violet. Uh, she's an only child who lives with her parents, lives with her mum and dad. And she just has to go about the normal business of being a teenager, navigating, being at school, um, you know, friendships changing now that she's at secondary school. Um, there's a few mean girls that she used to know at primary school and they're sort of sniffing around her best friend Violet um, and one day her and Violet go to an escape room they get an invite and they think that they're helping a social media research company on the latest place to go and hang out and little does Amber know that actually everyone who's there everyone who's taking part is being watched and assessed by a government agency and Amber actually gets recruited to be a teenage spy. Um, so the blurb, I'll read you the blurb, you know, it's a bit like a movie trailer. So the blurb is this. I'm Amber Roberts, just your average teenager. Life revolves around school and my best mate, Vi. Nothing too dramatic and certainly nothing dangerous. Well, that's how things used to be. So yeah, so this book out on the 1st of April is all about how Amber balances being a regular 14 year old who's into running, but doesn't, you know, is ordinary girl, doesn't feel she has any exceptional abilities. She doesn't think she's anything special. Um, but someone at a government agency has seen how she handled herself during the escape room task and has decided that she has just what it takes to be a fantastic spy. So obviously Amber takes up the challenge, otherwise there wouldn't be much book with there. Um, so Amber decides to see if she can balance being a teenager with being a spy and soon goes on her very first mission adventure. Um, and the book is all about how she navigates being a spy with balancing that with her home life, keeping the secret of what she's doing from her best friend and the fallout that has and just sort of navigating life and trying on different identities to see if she can complete her mission. She has to deal with meeting um, a fellow spy, a boy called Luca, who's a bit full of himself. So there's some shenanigans in there where she decides on how she's gonna tackle him. So yeah, so I've always been a fan of action adventure films. I quite like uh, I've got lots of different tastes, but I quite like a Bourne Identity movie and a Mission Impossible. And the thing that strikes me about those films is that the hero's always a boy. So why not a girl was one thing. And then I looked towards books and obviously you've got brilliant, brilliant spy action books. You've got... Um, Alex Ryder, which is fantastic. And the new TV series of Alex Ryder, they've done a really, really good job. Um, you've got Alex Ryder and you've got um, my son, who is 13, got through the whole of the first lockdown by reading the Cherub series. Um, and that also features teenage spies. 
And again, but again, although there are some girls in the Cherub series, the main characters are always a boy. But girls are just as cool. Um, are, if anything, I would say, girls may even have the advantage about things like blending in and probably keeping secrets, maybe. I hate to generalise, but I think girls will make amazing spies. Um, and obviously, as a teenager, also perfect spy material. Teenagers are used to sort of stretching the truth, used to sort of avoiding awkward questions. Um, yeah, I think teenagers make perfect spies. And who would suspect a teenager, right? Um, so that was part of my inspiration. Um, and that whole thing about if someone thinks they're sort of ordinary, but someone else can recognise qualities in them that make them extraordinary. So Amber, her best friend, V, is into drama and is quite sort of dramatic and comes from a big household with lots of brothers, you know, lots of brothers, quite hectic, noisy, very outgoing. Um, but Amber's the kind of opposite a bit. She likes to keep her head down at school. She likes to hang back and observe. There's a few things she's really not keen on. She's not keen on public speaking. Um, she can be shy in certain situations, but she's got a cool, logical head about her. And I sort of wanted that to triumph and show her for the hero that she can be. So I'm going to read a little bit. I think I will read. Let me see. Let's read from when she does her first mission. Um, her first practice mission, I think. Oh, I can't find it now. Hmm. Okay. Clara has just told her that she's going to be recruited to be a spy. Clara is the boss of the government agency. So I'm trying to decide what to read because obviously I want to get you excited about the book, but I don't want to give massive spoilers either. So I'm going to read a bit from chapter five. As I sat in the back of the car, Clara had ordered to take me home, driving away from what I'd thought was escape zone, but wasn't. I ran through the whole crazy scene in my head again. Clara's words were spinning around my head like bumper cars. The rest of our meeting had been spent with Clara firing questions at me, as if I was being interrogated. Some of the questions were easy to answer. Yes, I'd loved the kick of the virtual reality game. Yes, I'd wanted to succeed and had been disappointed when I'd failed. Yes, I was pretty sure where I'd gone wrong and why. Yes, I enjoyed my own company. Yes, I could definitely keep a secret. That one obviously reminded me of Vi and us drifting away from each other and her latching onto Taylor. I also thought of Mum's pregnancy and how I was keeping that from Vi, the person I thought would be my best friend forever. Other questions Clara asked me weren't so easy. Would I do whatever it took to achieve my goal as a spy? I had no idea. I was honest about that, but Clara just nodded, like my answer didn't faze her. You impressed us, Amber, she'd said. You evidently take on challenges with a positive attitude. You want to succeed. That, coupled with your propensity for strategic thinking, means you have the perfect mindset for what we need. Your confidence needs a boost, and you ought to give yourself more credit. But your self-deprecating humour makes you likeable and human. Excellent traits for a spy who needs to blend in effectively. She beamed at me like I'd made her the happiest person alive before adding, You stood out during your escape room test yesterday, demonstrating leadership qualities and keeping a level head under pressure. All of that is why we invited you in today. I'd frowned, trying to catch up with everything she just said. But how exactly do you know so much about me, Clara? We've been watching you. We know you're physically fit. One of our team has, has observed that your performance at school on the running track is excellent. Well paced and full of stamina, while others shoot forward because they're impatient, you keep the end objective in mind. You think things through. You're observant. Do you understand how rare those qualities are in teenagers? She gave a throaty laugh. Wow. That was quite some stalking the agency had been doing. I didn't know whether to be impressed or terrified. Maybe both. 
Clara had looked down at her tablet and then looked back up at me. Due to your parents registering you with a donor card, we have legal access to your medical records. She smiled, as though this wasn't disturbing information. You're a picture of physical health. Your blood work and immune system are top notch. And of course, the fact that you're way above average height and weight for your age is a distinct advantage, allowing you to pass for three or even four years old if necessary. Right, OK. Uh, good to know? I sat there, stunned. Finding out that a complete stranger knew everything about me was very weird. How would she like it if her privacy had been invaded? But I tried to focus on the positives. She was right. I didn't get colds very often. And I came from a family with a longer than average lifespan. Both sets of grandparents were alive and well still. Unless I got run over by a truck or maimed by an assassin. At that point, a shot of fear went through me, but I shook it off and told myself that encountering an assassin was highly unlikely. Probably? They wanted me because I had skills. I could do this. I'd always been nosy. Age six, I'd had deep suspicions about the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny. And under my interrogation techniques, Mum and Dad both folded in five minutes flat and confessed all. And Clara was right. I was observant. I always noticed when Vi or any teachers changed anything about themselves. So, Clara had interrupted my thoughts. I think we're ready to start. Then she handed me a state-of-the-art mobile, telling me it was pre-programmed with the details I'd need. I'd never seen anything so cute, teeny tiny and closed in on itself like a clamshell. My own phone was Mum's old cast-off. Clara assured me this one was shockproof, waterproof and drop-proof. I kind of wanted to test this, but I didn't. Apparently, this phone was how the agency would reach me, and I had to keep it with me at all times. Sitting in the car now, I caught the eye of the driver, then looked away. I knew I wasn't dreaming. That meeting had actually just happened. The clam phone vibrated in my hand. I opened my fist, stared at it in shock like I'd never seen a phone before. I opened it and touched the envelope on screen. Welcome, Amber. Any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We think you'll be an invaluable member of the team. I put it into my pocket, grinning. Invaluable? Excellent. I could get used to this. I spent the last year not believing in myself much, and when you do that for long enough, then you start to convince everyone else of it too. But deep down, I'd always hoped I was special, and I'd really felt it during the escape room experience. The buzz I'd got from getting us out of there thinking quicker than everyone else and noticing things that pass them by. I might not be a grade A student, but here was proof I wasn't a complete loser either. I'll stop there. So that's a bit from chapter five. There is loads of action in this and there's some very fast paced chapters, but I don't want to give any spoilers. So that's just gives you a bit of a flavour of Amber and her voice and what she's like. Um, so yeah, that's out on April the 1st and you can order from Moon Lane Bookshop. Um, it's kind of, I'd say, upper middle grade. So although middle grade is probably more of an American term, I'd say, um, whereas Son of the Circus is definitely 8 to 12, I would say that Amber Undercover um, is definitely sort of 10 plus, I reckon. 10 to 13 is the ideal age for this for this book so thinking about reading and writing i've always loved reading and writing and i always had fantastic english teachers in both primary and secondary school so we're going to move on and i am going to suggest a writing task for you i'm going to keep it spy related so during my research, I came across some amazing technology, things like, I mean, some of them feature in the book. So there is now a driverless car, which you may have heard about. There's also driverless motorbikes. Um, and I think technology is growing all the time. And I think we'll kind of agree that it's pretty amazing. But I sometimes wonder what aliens would make of the world and the technology we have if they, you know, just landed on earth one day. Um, that's what writers' brains do. I think we're just always asking questions. So what I'd like you to do 
is to find an ordinary household object. Just something that's lying around, you know, it can be anything. It can be a fork, it can be um, a telephone, it can be a felt-tip pen, uh, a battery, just any object that you can think of. And imagine that you're an alien and you're seeing this object for the very first time. So I'd like you to describe the object, just, um, you know, a short description of the object, but then I'd like you to add another layer to that. And, you know, if you suddenly decide that a battery is actually a teleportation device, perhaps think about what this object could do if it had an extra function as a spy gadget. So in this book, um, there are a few spy gadgets. I mean, that's the best thing about spy stuff, isn't it? You know, James Bond and all the, all the gadgets and Mission Impossible. So, you know, in this book, there might be um, like a lipstick that turns into something or a watch that when you press it does something different. So basically, I would love you to get a household object and instead of the purpose of what it actually is for, to imagine something kind of crazy and outrageous that it could be used for, as well as trying to look at it in a new light, as if you've never seen it before, you have absolutely no idea what it does. So thinking about this, you know, if I was going to see a fork for the first time, with those four prongs, I would probably think it was like a mini spear or something. Um, I don't think it would occur to me that it was used to eat anything. Um, and I would definitely use it to poke holes into things, you know, that kind of thing. So that might give you some ideas. Um, apart from that, I think I wanted to say, I hope that you have a wonderful Easter time. I'm saying that now because Amber is out 1st of April, which is obviously April Fool, but it's all around Easter. And I hope that you manage to have lots of eggs. If eating chocolate eggs is something that you do, that's something that I do. And me and my kids and husband will be doing. I'm looking forward to it. And apart from that, I hope you're well. I hope you enjoy the writing exercise. Keep reading and writing. And thank you, Moon Lane, for having me. You can find me, by the way, at elnorrynorry.com. So come on over and say hello. Bye.